Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house once again, Jesus. We've come, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth, and to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying to each one of us. We believe you have something uh, for each one of us. You know exactly what our needs are. There are many different needs, Jesus, but we believe you have everything that we need. We just pray you anoint me to speak that which you've laid upon my heart, and may we, that we have ears to receive, and may we obey your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Pastor uh, Josh, I just don't know where he's at. I'm sure he's the one to probably uh, pick this song out tonight. The reason I live is to worship Jesus. You're going to be surprised. The scriptures I'm going to be reading, right. and it's, that word worship is in there several times in several of the scriptures. So I know the Lord had him to pick that song out tonight. Um, I've entitled this tonight, <clears throat> Does Jesus Still Heal Today? Does Jesus Still Heal Today? And if not, when did he stop? Good question, right? Probably, if I'd ask for hands to go up, I'd probably be 100% here. Say, Jesus heals today. Yes, I, yes, he does. Hebrews 13 and 8, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forevermore. He is always the same. You know, we're prone sometimes to, you know, read our Bibles and read what happened in past years when Jesus walked upon the earth and the disciples and all. And everyone that Jesus come um, to was healed. He would pray for them. Everyone would be healed. You know, of anybody that wasn't healed, I don't know. I've you know read scriptures a lot, and I didn't find anyone where he didn't heal. There was one lady he didn't heal right first, right at first, but he did heal later on. We'll even be talking about that. But Jesus always heals, and he does not, or I should say, he doesn't think any more of those people back then than he does you and I. Right? He doesn't think any less of us. Those he's no respect for a person. Romans 2 and 11, for there is no respect of persons with God. He does not show partiality. He does not show favoritism. For you're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we all walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. Romans 14, 23 says, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, when I read that, that really gets a hold of my heart because I know sometimes it's hard to have 100% faith for every time you pray for something, somebody to be healed or whatever. But the Bible says it, it, if it's not of faith, it's sin. So, I think we need to examine ourselves and, and to see when, you know, we, have, we pray for somebody. It may be the answer. I mean, maybe the person said and we're praying for healing. And we're going to be talking quite a bit about that. Um, I might just say from the start here, I, I, I've got hours and hours and hours in this sermon. But I guarantee it's not going to be real, real long tonight. I, I don't think it will be. You know, I've been known, all the Owens, as Pastor Owens and myself, we've been known to be pretty winded. But I promise you, we're not going to be real winded. I mean, unless the Lord really <laughs> thinks so. But anyway, but I mean, I could, because I have 18 pages of notes and not a lot of the scriptures. But I don't know why. I don't see how the Lord works on all that. But <laughs> so Romans 12 and 3, it says, For I, Paul, say through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly and early as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Whether you know it or not, you have the, you don't have a measure of faith, you have the measure of faith. You have exactly enough faith to be saved, and you have enough faith to be healed. Isn't it good to know that? You do. And I hope that I will be able to prove that tonight. You have enough faith to be healed. 
And I said, hmm. I said, well, boy, I've been prayed for a lot of times and, I, and hasn't been healed. Well, we'll see what happens here. You know, some people, uh, there's many things that people say as the reason why they don't, they try to make excuses why they're not healed. And there, here's one. He says, I don't know if it's God's will to heal me. Well, if you don't know it's God's will to heal you, then I'll tell you right now, you won't be healed. You won't be healed. You've got to know that it's God's will to heal you. I'll, I'll, it is God's will to heal every individual. He has not changed. He healed everybody in the past. Is, is everybody going to be healed? No. Is everybody going to be saved? No. Is it God's will for everybody to be saved? Yes. So everybody's not going to be saved and everybody's not going to be healed. But you can be. You can be healed. It doesn't make any difference what you have. If you have cancer, the doctors gave you 30 days to live, you can be healed. And I would not stand up here and say that if I didn't believe it. Some people might say, well, God, you know, he might have, he might heal me, but, you know, I don't know. Or I hope God will heal me. Or God could heal me if he wants to. Well, he wants to. I'll tell you that right now. I don't know if I will be healed or not. Okay, if you pray that, that kind of prayer, and this makes sense to me, see if it does to you. If you pray that kind of prayer, I'm not sure if it's God's will to heal that person. So you pray a little prayer over that person, and that person's not healed. Then you can say, well, it probably wasn't God's will to heal that person anyway. So cop out. That's the way we get out of it. It probably wasn't God's will to heal him. Hmm. Strange. Just because we didn't see it happen, it would still be God's will. God has given all of us faith to be saved and to be healed. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to be healed. And God is not going to give you any more faith than you have right now if you don't put the faith that you have that he's already given you. If you don't put it to work, you're not going to get any more faith. The way to receive more faith is to put that little faith that God gave you See, a little child didn't understand salvation, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old. And, you know, realize what it is you know, to be saved. Not fully, but they didn't, you know, uh, they know a lot more than we think they do. Faith, I, this is what faith is. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. How many believe God is telling the truth? He's just telling the truth. All we've got to do is believe the truth, what he says. And, and that's a big load. Is God's word true or not? Simple question. Is it true or not? It's either true or it's not. And it's true. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For but grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself is the gift of God. Uh, Psalms 104, it says, Enter into the days of things given into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Acts 16, 25, 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Now, why did that happen? It happened because Paul and Silas was praising God. We'll get to it a little bit more. But I believe, I believe the Lord has laid this on my heart. This is the way that I really believe. A lot of times we're not healed because we don't praise God and worship him like we should before we ask for the healing. We should, we should worship him first. And I'm going to prove it to you in a few minutes with some scriptures. That we've got to worship him first. And, that, and the song, like I said, the reason I, I exist is to worship him. That's the reason you're here. To worship him and to try to win your fellow man, brother and sister, or not brother and sister, they're not saved, those that's not saved, to the Lord. That's what it's all about. Things happen when we worship God. The Lord is worthy of every praise. We're going to be reading some scriptures here pretty soon, and it's going to be uh, pertaining to uh, some people that had leprosy and palsy. I just looked this up so I would know exactly. I, knew, I didn't know exactly what leprosy was. I know it's something like cancer. It eats away, eats your fingers and your hands, and 
and there's no cure for it other than the, the Lord. But leprosy is a chronic infectious disease of the skin. Tissue or nerves characterized by ulcers, white scaly scabs, deformities, and wasting of body parts. Sounds bad, doesn't it? It is bad. But you know God can heal leprosy. All through the Bible, lepro that was one of the main diseases, leprosy and palsy. I mean, there were so many people that had it, and God healed them. Palsy is a... Um, uh, trying to see, uh, uh, I didn't even say the word right now, uh, paralysis, there we go. It's any part of the body, sometimes accompanied by in, involuntary tremors to make you helpless and even it would give you fear, a certain amount of fear. Boy, that sounds bad, doesn't it? It is bad. <clears throat> Mark eleven twenty three. 23, it says, So verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that these things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now we've read that and heard that 10 billion times, haven't we? But do we believe it? The word doubt, I looked that up. We pretty well, everybody knows pretty much, pretty much what doubt is. Doubt is the opposite of uh, what? Doubt. What's the opposite? Okay. Doubt is to be unsettled in opinion or belief. To be uncertain or undecided. To be inclined to disbelieve. To be fearful. A wavering of opinion or belief. See, we we waver in what we really what we really believe. Um, doubt, it, doubt, and be a horrible, horrible thing. And it's so easy for us to just let doubt creep in. Hebrews, uh, the eleventh chapter, verse six, it says, "Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is the rewarder, a rewarder." Let me start all over. Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he is he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Now this word diligently, this is what I want we to uh, only, uh, analyze a little bit. Diligently means to esteem highly, to choose, persevering, and careful work. Done with careful, steady effort, painstaking, preserved, to continue daily, sometimes in spite of difficulty, opposition, to persist, to refuse to give up. Sometimes we give up too soon. Amen. Diligently. I don't know what that, the Lord just dealt me with that word for I mean, so, so much. Diligently. <clears throat> We should keep believing until we receive our healing or whatever other need that we have. Keep of believing. Don't just pray for it one time, you know, and forget about it. But just keep, be very diligent. Diligently seek in the Lord. And the Bible says that we will receive our reward. Either he does, either he's telling the truth or he's not. You seek the Lord diligently and you will receive your reward. Whatever need is, if it's healing, you'll receive it. All right, now let's turn to uh, Matthew. No, no, getting ahead of myself a little bit. Let me get rid of some papers here. Let's turn to uh, Matthew. Let me just lay this down right here. <clears throat> Matthew, the eighth chapter. In the first verse, we talk about leper. And it says, When he was come down, talking about Jesus, from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leopard. Now listen, here's the word. Underline this word. The reason we exist is to worship God. It's, it's, 
See, this has to be the Lord, you know, for him to pick that song tonight. And this is one of the words that I, I outline, underline in my Bible. I want you to underline. And behold, there came a leopard. But what, what did this leopard do? Worshiped him. That's the first thing we need to do when we come to the Lord. Will we ask him for anything? Worship him. That is so powerful. The Lord's saying, If thou wilt thou and make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hands and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou cleansed, and immediately the leprosy was cleansed. Immediately. But he worshiped God. We want to rush into it, say a two-minute prayer or less, and expect a person to be healed with cancer. Don't work that way. Sorry. you got to worship the Lord first. Worship him first. And then let's go down to verse 5. Jesus heals a captain servant. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion. Now this one here, he was beseeching him that he would come. Um, beseeching me, in other words, to be pleading. He pleaded for, him, for Jesus to come and heal. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth home sick of the palsy. I already told you what palsy was. Grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I think that's so beautiful. Everyone... That Jesus asked to come. Jesus says, no, 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 you're not important. Go away. You're not, you know. But Jesus came. He stopped what he's doing and he went to that person. Isn't it wonderful to know that we serve a God like that? He is so interested. And sometimes we think, well, you poor old me, you know. There's seven billion people in the world. And the Lord, I'm just a little old person. Person, The Lord, he don't even know I'm here. Sometimes we may just feel like that. But the Bible says the Lord knows every hair that we have in our in our head. It, it doesn't have a hard job on mine anymore. Mine's coming out, see. So it's a little bit easier. But he has to subtract all those that I did have. I used to, my, I used to be full. My head it was black hair and full of hair. I had full head of hair. I mean, it's something else. Ask my wife. That's, a, that's what one hair. Or one me to her. <laughs> she liked that hair, that darn black hair. I don't know what happened to it. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. That, that is so beautiful. The servant turned and, and answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. That's faith, isn't it? Just, you don't even have to come to my place. Just say the word. Speak the word. I think that is so beautiful. For I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he doeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he, do, he doth it. And Jesus heard it, and he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. So, okay, we have, when we come to the Lord, we have to worship him first, and then we have to have faith. We have to have faith. And you like to say, don't say you don't have faith. You've, the Lord's already given you faith. And, and say he wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to be healed. I believe that with all my heart. And you may not believe it, and that's fine if you don't want to believe it. You, you ain't going to be healed if I'd say probably if you don't believe it. Because it's an odd, like I said before. It's, it's an excuse. If, if you're not, if you pray for somebody, it makes you look better, right? It's a way out there one time for I don't believe that anymore. Used to. I used to think, well, pray for the person I, Evidence, not God's will. Maybe God wants them to suffer and, you know, they can be a good person, be a good Christian, show the love, you know, they still have love, they ain't mad at God or anything. But personally, I don't think that's the way it works. But if you want to think that, that's fine. Let's go down to verse 13. And Jesus said unto the center, and go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour, the very moment. Now Jesus heals his. Uh, Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. And now Peter's mother-in-law was set with a fever. You know, there's a lot of sickness going around. Just about everyone that I know of that I've talked to, he was, had the flu or, or got it now. You know, so a lot of people's even got it right now. And, um, and so fever, you know, you can be sick and you have a high fever and it makes you hurt all, you just feel horrible all over. And, but uh, Peter's mother-in-law had this fever. But Jesus went in, and all he had to do, he just touched her, and she was made whole. Just touched her. And, and she got up and ministered to him. 
She said, I'm afraid to fix the meal for him. Isn't that something? Yeah. Getting out of the bed. You know, I didn't, um, I didn't remember when my mother, uh, Gracious mother, uh, I'd never be there before it was all break down, so I got to watch what I'm saying. Uh, she was so sad on this one time. I mean, she was deathly sad in bed, and all of us kids, we'd gather around and prayed for her. And boy, it wasn't long at all. She was up out of that bed and going strong. And I remember another time, or my mother-in-law, Sister David Earls, and Arlene Debbie's, Arlene and, and, and Geraldine's mother, uh, she was in a coma. She was a diabetic, and she went into a coma. And our pastor uh, at that time, Brother Knight, a lot of you even know Brother Knight, he was here. And boy, he went in, and all of us had gathered around uh, Granny's bed and prayed for her and prayed. And she did. How many remembers that? I said, you all, you guys remember? Boy, I tell you, she got out of that bed. I mean, she was in a coma. She did nothing. She, he was out of it. He didn't demand that spirit to leave her, and she, and she got up out of that bed beside him. Yeah. So we know we know the Lord heals. I mean, you, you, I'm too late if you tell me God doesn't heal today. Right. Too late. Sorry. So I know he heals. So I, I got to move on real fast, faster than I'm probably going here. But anyway, so... Uh, so uh, Peter's mother-in-law was, was healed. Now let's go over to uh, uh, Matthew, the ninth chapter, and the first verse. Okay, now here's, uh, there, it's, it's really strange how all of these, about all of these people, the majority of them that I'm talking about tonight, neither had leprosy or palsy. Now, the ninth chapter, and he entered into the ship and passed over and came into his own city, and behold, they brought to him a man set of palsy, lying on the bed, and Jesus, seeing their face, said unto the set of palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. Isn't that something to heal? He, he took care of their sins and healed his body. And behold, certain of the scribes said within himself, This man blasphemeth. And Jesus knoweth their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your heart, for whether it's easy to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then says he to the city of palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into the house. And he arose and departed into the house. Healed. Let's go over to the same chapter, ninth, uh, ninth, over to the uh, 19th verse. A ruler's daughter is revived and other healings is performed. These, these chapters are some of my favorite chapters when it comes to the healing. I've always loved these. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler. And what's the next word? And what did he do? Anybody looking in the Bibles there right now? Anybody look the scripture up? Nobody? There you go. Somebody was paying attention. Thank you. He, he worshiped. Do just that. What he speaks to word, Behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiping sin. My daughter is even now dead. Oh, wow. But come and lay thy hands upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, which, now I switch into another woman now, a, another person, a, behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years, came before him, and touched the hem of his garment, and for he said unto her, to herself, If I may but touch his garments, I shall be made whole. So faith, there again, you have to have faith. She had faith. There was no doubt in this little woman's life. She knew if she had just touched his, the hem of his garment. Didn't he really have to touch him, just the hem of his garment. She knew in her heart, I'm pointing to my head, but she knew in her heart that... <laughs> She knew in her heart, I'm going to do all kinds of crazy things, but she knew in her heart that, uh, that she would be healed. Faith. And Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. It's hard to be healed without faith. you got to have faith. And I used to think, the person itself had to have faith. I mean, the person itself has just been prayed for and needs to have faith. I mean, you know, need to be believing too. But I also believe 
that other people around you didn't pray, didn't pray for you and you'd be healed. Other people praying that you didn't be healed. You might be so sick, you might not be able to even pray. Hmm? So I really believe you didn't pray for someone and maybe they're not even, you know, maybe they don't have the faith, maybe they're, but they don't have the faith that you do. And you didn't have faith for someone else. Now, I didn't used to believe that, but I believe with all my heart now. I believe you did. Okay, let's see. Let's drop down to 27. And when Jesus departed, then now two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. According to your faith. No faith, no healing. So you've got to have faith. Okay, now I'm going to jump down to verse 32. Uh, still the same chapter. Verse, uh, chapter 9 of Matthew, verse 32. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with the devil. You ever seen anybody possessed with the devil? We have. I've seen one person. I don't care to ever see another one. Come right up on here. We won't go into that. I know Steve and a lot of people remembers that deal. That was something else. That guy was possessed with the devil. I mean, he hissed and done everything, just like the snake right up here. I mean, it took seven of us to, it, to hold him down. And cast the devil out, and put that out, and he just relaxed and boy went home and burned all of his stink and tapes and stuff he had, you know. And that really happened in this church right here. Cast that devil out. I mean, it was real. You think it ain't real? I don't want no part of it. Uh, they're real. Okay, and let's see. Okay, verse 32. And they went about, and they brought him a dumb man possessed with the devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spade and the multitudes marvels, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. But the, but the Pharisees said, He answers out devils through the prince of devils. And Jesus went about the city and the village, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He didn't heal some of them. He healed every single one. All. Every one. E-V-E-R-Y. Every sickness, every disease. And as we already said, Jesus don't respect a person. If he healed them, I believe he'll heal you and I. Okay. Now let's turn over to uh, Matthew, the 15th chapter and the 21st verse. And uh, now we got a, the daughter of a Canaanite woman is healed. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And this is what I sent you about, Waldo. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But the first time they come to Jesus, he didn't answer. He, he, he didn't go. But, but then the 24th verse, he said, he, and then he answered and said, I am not sent into the house, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshiped. Wow. I learned that word worship wow. again. I mean, it's all through there. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and to answer to the dog. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the drums which fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Powerful, isn't it? What, you know, what did I add to it? You know, you know, I, I, I'm pretty plain die. I just try to tell it or read it like it is in the Bible. You either take it or you leave, right? Yeah. You know, it's not me trying to add to it or take it away from it. That's the Bible. That's what it says. All right, now turn to uh, Luke 17, 6. It says, The Lord said, and said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, 
ye shall say unto this sedimine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. Now, how many knows uh, something, little something about a mustard seed? No, I mean, you know it's tiny. One of the tiniest seeds, I guess there is. Anybody know of a smaller seed than a mustard seed? It, it's very tiny. But perhaps the, the, uh, the Lord was talking about the size of the mustard seed. You don't have to have very much. But I think you know he's something even probably different than that. You know what it is? I don't know whether you know it or not, whether you're much of a farmer. Well, I was raised on a farm, and we had gardens and stuff. So like I said, the mustard seed is so tiny, you can hardly see it. But you, try, you plant a mustard seed in with some radishes and see what happens. Mustard seed's not going to grow. So that lets me know you, it won't mix with doubt. You can't mix faith with doubt, you know. You can't have doubt and faith at the same time. It will not mix, sorry. Faith and doubt won't mix. So the mustard seed... You've got to have 100% faith. How do you get faith? Anybody tell me? Sure you know. Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know, I know most of you wouldn't be here tonight if you, if you didn't love the Lord, you know. You're on a Sunday night. There's other places you could be home, home watching TV or whatever. So I know you love the Lord or you wouldn't be here. And me and my wife, we was taught in the other day, you know, like so we live in Bloomington, most everybody knows that. 40 miles from here, we drive 80 miles every Sunday to be with you people. Now, there's a lot of beautiful churches in town. I don't mean building, I don't care about that. Beautiful people. But the, with the people here, it's so beautiful. I mean, and I don't mean you're little, I mean you're pretty too, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, you thought I was talking about that. Boy, you was getting the bed head, wasn't you? I said, man, ain't I beautiful? You are. You are beautiful. I, it's been said, I don't, think you, I don't think there is such thing as an ugly Christian. If you're a Christian, I mean, you, there's something about you, you know, you're beautiful. You really are. I really mean that. But what I'm saying, I said all that to say this. We, but we, we, we go to church in Bloomington, like I said, and, I, and, our, and our kids do, and sometimes they get aggravated with us that we don't come to their church and, and visit with them more often, and we probably should, and we probably will start doing some maybe more than we, we have before. I think we probably owe that to our kids. But, um, but anyway, but, but also I love you people. And when we missed church a couple of weeks ago, there was some, uh, quite a bit of ice. Not, not a whole lot of ice, but they said the road is going to be bad, and, you know, we don't want to get on the road. We've done that too many times, about slid in the ditch and seen cars pass us and going 90 mile an hour on, on the ice and did, get on down the road a little bit and they'd be out in the ditch. We've seen one turned around about three times right in front of us, back down through the ditch and end up out there in the field. We should have been going that fast to start with. But what I'm saying, but we come down there, but all we think you people are so special and we love you. Now, I mean it. We, me and my wife, <laughs> we talked about it all the time. A lot of beautiful people. Hebrews 13 and 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 14, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and our faith is in vain. I'm glad we're serving a living God. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. He died once, but he'll never die again. Ephesians 6 and 16, it says, Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8 says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet, the hope of salvation. Hebrews 12, 2, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the chain, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. First, or set in Peter, first chapter 4 through 7. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to your virtue knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, or we can say self-control, 
the temp and the into temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, charity. But beloved, now this is Jude 112, 20, 120. But ye beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. First uh, First Colossians 1, not 23. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, where, where I, Paul, am made a minister. James 1 and 5 uh, through 8, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all liberally, and embraceth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So you got to have faith. Not wait, you can't waver. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. You know, you've seen the, the water, how it blows. You know, you're in a little boat and just blow a little boat all around. But see, we got to be steadfast. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. He don't receive nothing. Forget it. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man, I think that maybe a person is trying to only straddle the fence, only live for the Lord, you know, don't want to really be sold out to the Lord. Just only straddle the fence. You know, they know enough about the Lord, they don't want to go to hell. So they're straddling the fence, you know, and they really want to go to heaven, but they don't want to pay the price. They don't want to really live for the Lord. All right, James 5, 13 through 15. It says, is any among you afflicted? Anybody sick? I tell you, with all the diseases and things going on, I tell you, I mean, there is so many people with cancer, with every kind of disease. And the thing about it, guys, you better get some faith. And I'm, and I'm talking about myself. You know, well, I'm, I'm preaching myself, probably number one. So we, there, there's going to come a time we're going to wish we had more faith. We're going to need more faith, I'll put it that way. Yeah. Because I tell you what, there's going to be diseases. The doctors ain't already on it. If the doctor, the shady said, ain't nothing to do about it. Yeah. No, there's no, there's no cure for it. Say sorry, there's no medicine. To, you know, usually we're used to going to get a, some penicillin shot or something. You know, uh, antibody, z pat or something. And most generally, you, you know, you do all right. But there's diseases out there now. They ain't gonna work. They don't have no cure for it. So we better be putting our confidence in the Lord. If there's any afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him pray over, over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Must be a prayer of faith. Why pray? I pray, but all the Lord answered prayer. If he didn't answer, there wouldn't be no need to pray, would there? Proverbs 4.20 and uh, 22, it says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Luke 17.12.14 as Jesus entered into a certain village, there met him ten more that was lepers. Did you ever see anything like this? Ten more lepers. Which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. But you notice they had enough faith to do what God told them to do, to be healed. Suppose they didn't do what Jesus said. If they hadn't went and showed themselves to the priest, it still had it, right? They wouldn't have been healed. So we got to do what the Bible tells us to do. Not do what we think, you know, you, you know what we should do. What does the Bible say? What does it say you should do? Do it, but then you do that. First John 5:14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. 
And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. See, we know. We know that we, if we know that he hears us, and whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire. That's powerful. It says, 3 John, uh, that in verse over there. Beloved, I wish above all things that they may, thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thou so prosper. Jesus wants all of us to be healthy. You think, Jesus, it's glory out of you being set, having something wrong with you? What kind of testimony is that? What can you do for the Lord if you're, you're set and bent fast? And you know, it, it, it's hard to do too much, right? I think Jesus wants us well, and he wants us to be so we can be out working for him. Psalms 37, 3, 3 8. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee desires of the heart. Commit thy way into the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth the righteousness and the light and the judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of the man who bringeth the wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any, any other wise to do evil. Deuteronomy 7, 15. And the Lord will take away from these all sickness and will put none of these diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. If God did, did this for the Israelites, will he not do it for us? Are, are the Israelites, are they better, are they better than we? Huh? I, don't think, I don't think they were. Now here's Exodus 15, 26. If thou wilt, here's that word again, diligently. I love that word. If thou wilt diligently hearten to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians. And the Lord, I am the Lord that he the thee. He's the Lord, same one, same, not a different one. We're not serving a different God. Exodus 23, 25, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from thee, from the midst of thee. Wow. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Take sickness away from there at the end. You know? He loves us just as much as, we, as he did this once. I believe that. Somebody said, well, you know, that was back then. That's what a lot of people think now. That's the reason... They don't see a lot of healings, you know, but all they think is for the past, it's all done with. After the disciples, that's it. I've heard people say, the Lord didn't heal. doesn't heal today. I've already said that. Jeremiah 30, 17, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord. I, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of all thy wounds. Sounds good to me. Psalms 103, 2, 4. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, or sins, the wickedness, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, and who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. No. Fruit, he, uh, no. First, yeah, first he, he forgave their sins, and then he healed their body. For their sins. That's the most important. You can be said. You can have an answer and still go to heaven. You don't have an answer and get to heaven, but you can have an answer right now and still go to heaven, right? But you can't go to heaven if you're not saved. That'll be saved. That'll be born again. Psalms 34, 17 and 19. I'll be winding up for just for too long. The righteousness dry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto thee that are of broken heart and, and save us such as be of an untrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And the afflictions, we know what that is. That's, that's a condition of pain and suffering. We all, you know, are 
familiar with that. Matthew 8, 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and, excuse me, and bear our sickness. The Lord's already done it. Why should we err when the Lord's already done it? Matthew 5, 15, 13, great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and asked them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, the familiar verse, everybody knows. Surely he has borne our recent error or sorrows, yet we did esteem him stripped and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the cross, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Past tense. Already done, already paid it. Paid in full. Matthew 4, 4 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You gotta watch what you say. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. I didn't realize that for many, many years. And that's where you need how to speak life. You speak death, you're gonna get death. Speak life. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is believing before you receive. You believe it before you receive it, before you see the answer, before you see what you're praying for, you already know you died. it. That's faith. That faith is that substance of things, hope. whatever you're hoping for, what you're praying for, all right, that faith is that. And you've got to keep holding on to that, and well, or maybe you hadn't seen it in the past yet, but you've got to believe it before you see it. If you don't believe it before you see it, probably not going to see it, so you've got to believe it. Believe it first. Don't wait till you see it. See? Yeah. Believe it first. Then after you see it, you will believe it, won't you? <laughs> but we're supposed to believe it first. Matthew 21, 22. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, that a belief, ye shall receive. Faith is, like I said, I already read, said that, believing before you see it. Uh, Matthew 7. And that it shall be, even you see it and you shall find, not it shall be open to you. For everyone that asks to receive and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that not as it shall be open. Or what man is there of you whom he, if, he, if his son asks for a bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give to those that ask? You being of evil nature. nature. That's what it means. It says that you that are evil it doesn't mean you're an evil person. It means you have an evil nature. It's a sin, we all have the, the evil sinful nature. It's not eradicated, is it? When you did say, but still they're raised inside the head once in a while, right? Oh, yeah. oh don't you all angels out there probably don't happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just teasing, guys. John 14, 12, 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, that the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, but all that go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my, in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Pretty plain, isn't it? But we don't we believe it, though. You, you read it. And if you don't believe it, it you know, it's not going to happen. You don't, you don't know in your heart. You don't know in your heart that whatever you're praying, it's going to happen. You just don't, you don't know. You got to be there. It's going to happen. First Corinthians 12 and 19, it talks about the spiritual gifts. And, we, and of course, there are nine gifts, and we're not talking about all them. But healing was one of them. So that's one of the gifts, gifts of healing. And it's a needed gift. It's a needed gift, the gift of healing. Lord have mercy. If we don't need the gift of healing now, you ain't ever going to need it, guys. Okay, I just, I was reading my, I got a note, wrote down at Eddie Wampus here. And it says, uh, don't just pray for the healing one time, then give up. I, I, I've known people, they say, well, don't even pray in the, you know, the, for the same need over and over and over and over again. What? Man, 
I've seen, you know, people have been praying for maybe 100 times not be healed. Maybe the 101 times they're praying for they're healed. So you can eat, I tell you how long you can eat for praying for a person until you see that person healed. So you're praying for healing. That's when you, when you stop praying for that person to be healed, it's when that person's healed. Or either the Lord takes them on to heaven or whatever. All right, Jesus heals a blind man and he, he cometh to Bethesda and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and he led him out of the town. And when he had spit in his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw all. Now listen. Now Jesus has done the praying here. And he looked up and said, I see a man as trees walking. Now Jesus prayed for this man. He wouldn't heal the first time. How about that? It should encourage you, right? What, what if Jesus would stop? But listen, he, but he prayed for After that, he put his hands in upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was re restored and saw every man clearly. This time he'd see. What if he gave up? This man would, he would, he would he'd, he'd walk around seeing man as trees walking. See, see, so don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, then uh, I'm still watching the time. I, I, I'm, I'm about done, guys. The restoration of Barnabas, this site. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Barnabas, the son of Timothy, sat by the highway bedding. And when he had heard that, it was uh, Jesus of Nazareth, he put in to dry out and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus stood up and demanded him to be called and they all the blind man saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, and he cometh to thee. And he asked away his garments, and rose, and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou have me that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, That I might receive my sight. And Jesus meant the good person that he was. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight, and followed Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Psalms 105. There was not one feeble person among the tribes, you know, when Moses led them out of Egypt. wonder why we think we're supposed to go around set all the time. Something wrong with us. And it was three, five million people. I'm not sure how many people was led out of Egypt. But not a feeble person among them. Feeble means, we know what it means. It means frail or sickness. But to think, not one person is sick. And yet, for some reason, so many people think they're supposed to be sick. Or it's not God's will to heal. Matthew 10 and 1, And when he had called to him his twelve disciples, he gave them power and instantly in spirits, to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Not just some, not some sicknesses, not some diseases, but all. A L L all. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into in the city of Samaria, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devils, freely ye have received, freely give. That's what he's called us to do. You and I are disciples of Jesus Christ. Are we not? We are his disciples, and we are supposed to do what the disciples did. Can you say amen? amen? Well, I hope you got a little something out of this. I moved a little bit faster. Maybe I should have. But uh, I just pray that, you know, that it will minister to you and it will be help. And I hope your faith will be increased. May God bless each and every one of you. It's been a great day in the Lord, I tell you. It's from the, the very song this morning, it was starting out. And if you was here this morning, I, I guarantee you would have to say the Holy Spirit was here in a special way. I may even say that. Huh? Yeah. It was so precious. And then our brother boy got up and prayed. Lord, I, I felt like there's going to be raptured. I, it, now, I wouldn't hear Brother Steve, Pastor Steve, preach, but the boy, I understand he gave a powerful message. I, you know, I, you know I, I, love, I love to be a teacher, love to be teaching, but you know, I miss a lot. I miss a lot. 
And so that's the reason every once in a while you'll see me in the past and here it goes, I want to hear Steve preach. And then it was last Sunday, uh, the bishop preached. I don't need to hear him preach much because he don't preach a lot on Sunday. So I want to hear him. We, I tell you guys, we never know when we're here. We, we never know when we're going to see each other for the last time. I told the ladies at the nursing home today, you know what I told them? I said, we may not see you again. I said, will you guarantee me that you'll see me in heaven? And they said, yeah. I said, you know, we don't know. I mean, we, I may know before they, they may know before me, but when I might not see them. We, we probably won't, exactly like we heard tonight, I, I'll guarantee you. I'll, no more than there's here tonight. We had a big crowd this morning, didn't we? I don't know where everybody's at tonight, but that's beside the point. You know what I prayed? I'm going to shut up here in just a minute. I prayed that the Lord would have the ones here that he wanted here. Now listen, I prayed that. I said, those that don't need to be here, you know, just keep them away. Not done. And so you're here by divine appointment. I asked for God to, the ones to be here that he wanted here. Not the one I wanted. I would, I didn't like to, I was a little disappointed in a the, in the little bit, I'm going to tell myself, that I didn't see more people here. I was hoping to be full. Not to hear me, but to hear the, the Bible. The word is not me. But we, I appreciate these brothers so much, Pastor Steve and, and Brother Boyles and uh, I, I, Brother Sullivan and I, who else was in there, somebody else. But uh, I appreciate them so much. They had prayer with me. And, uh, yeah, Brother Jim. I didn't forget our Brother Jim. He's precious. And, uh, and it meant a lot. And see, it gives you, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, guys, it gives you boldness, doesn't it? I, you know, I'm, I'm as timid as it can be. You know me, I'm as timid. I'd soon to hide behind something else. But when the Holy Ghost comes up on me, buddy, I am bold. I am bold. I, I am. Lord have mercy. I am bold. And, uh, but it's, it's got to be the Holy Ghost. I didn't do that. I, I just told, told the brothers, I have nothing to say. If the Lord don't anoint what I say, and you, know, you know, it won't mount anything. So I pray that you can receive something. And well, hopefully you will have more faith. I'm going to try to have more faith. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Benny. Praise the Lord.